Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out top 10 British foods you either love or hate. Sandwiches need never be done. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK. Paddington and today we're counting down our my... picks for the top 10 British foods you either love <laughs> or hate. Great. For this list, we'll be looking at controversial foods and dishes what is that, that have divided the UK into camps of either love oh, no. or hate and nothing in between. Which food do you love that other oh, people hate? Is that... Let us know below. Pudding. I don't know what that is, but it looks good. I assume there's alcohol in it because it's on fire. It's probably figgy pudding because I see Christmas decorations around it. I think it's figgy pudding, right? Well, they've already mentioned Marmite. I've never had that. I bet they'll talk about maybe chicken tikka masala or fish and chips. Um, What else? Mayonnaise, maybe? Is mayonnaise British? I don't know. I don't really know what to expect from this. Number 10, brown sauce. Never Never had it. It. When making a bacon sandwich, people in the UK will be at war on which sauce to add. Bacon. Some will go with tomato ketchup or tomato sauce, depending on where you're from, while others will go for the vinegary taste of brown sauce. Oh, it's vinegar. And there's not a lot of crossover with which section folks fall in. Usually, it's one or the other. Huh. But if you dislike brown sauce, then you dislike it a lot. The most famous brand, HP Sauce, has been around since the late 1800s. Traditionally, the sauce is used in cooked breakfasts as a tangy addition, but it's shown some versatility by being used in casseroles, gravy, stews, and even spaghetti bolognese, which probably upsets Italy. Okay, I've never had brown sauce. This guy's saying that it tastes vinegary? Is it like a vinegary barbecue sauce? I could get down on some vinegar. Like on fish and chips, like fried fish vinegar is great. Oh, and like salt and vinegar chips or salt and vinegar popcorn is really good. The taste is either tart or sweet with a peppery taste similar to that of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce is great. Typically eaten with meals such as full breakfast, bacon sandwiches, and chips. Okay, so it's like a steak sauce almost. I gotta try it. I bet it's good. It's probably one of those sauces that by itself is intense or extreme, but whenever you add it onto something else, it's great. I could see that. Number nine, jellied eels. When people think of the most controversial UK foods, oh. jellied eels will be right up there. <laughs> the dish is said to have originated in East London in the 1700s, oh. since eels were cheap and plentiful back then. Oh. Nowadays, it's often served in seafood vans across the UK's seaside. No, 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 no. That's disgusting. It's slimy. I'll probably be sick. Made from boiling chopped eels in stock and oh. letting it cool and set into a jelly, mm. it's definitely an acquired taste. Just looking at it is a hurdle. Traditionalists mm. often love this grub with ardent passion, regularly bringing it back into the collective consciousness mm. should it disappear for a while. Mm. But those that don't oh. like the look of it She's eating really it. hate it. And oh. we really can't blame them. Number she eight. She likes it. Li okay, it's not the eel that bothers me, it's the jelly. Whenever I get sushi, one of my favorite things is the eel roll. They put teriyaki sauce on it, it's on a thing of rice. It's really good. But this is straight up eel in gelatin. There's nothing to distract from the fact that you're eating eel. And I would think that the gelatin only makes it more eely, slimy. <laughs> I would try it. When I go to England, I'm going to have to try it just to say that I tried it. I'm open to it. Just put a little brown sauce on it. Would that be good? Brown sauce on jellied eel? Knock two out with one? Yeah, that eel needs some something else. Something else. Not straight up eel in jelly. Like maybe a flavored jelly? A soy garlic jelly? Okay, jelly deal. I can't, I don't know if I love it or hate it. I'm gonna, I might love it. It might be so delicious, I don't even know. Is there salt in it? Number eight, licorice all sorts. If there's Never one thing that we're really good at in the UK, it's making sweet licorice. This is lucky since Scandinavia has the market cornered with the salted variety. Invented in Sheffield during the late 1800s by the sweet manufacturers Bassett's, licorice all sorts are delightful. Mm. For some, anyway. Others despise it due to the massive problem of them containing mostly licorice. 
as well as some <laughs> of the ore sorts being made with coconut, another dividing ingredient. Hmm. The Bush ore sorts even had their own mascot in the form of the Frankenstein-esque Bertie Bassett. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of licorice, but that doesn't seem so bad. I'll eat it. I'll try it. What's the... I mean, I can see the black parts, which are black licorice, I assume, but what are the other parts, the colored parts? Are those licorice that have just been dyed another color, or is it different flavors? Licorice, sugar, coconut, aniseed jelly, fruit flavorings, and gelatin. More gelatin. Sheffield, England. Okay, so there are other fruit flavors and things. All right, all right. I think the only black licorice I've had is straight up black licorice. I've not had it with other fruit flavors. Maybe I'd like it. I don't know. I doubt it. Number seven, mushy, mushy peas. peas. I if like you go peas. to most football stadiums in the north, or some kind of fair or public gathering, there'll likely be someone serving pots of mushy peas for you to enjoy or be disturbed by. Not looking the most appetizing, Mushy peas are often bought alongside meals like fish and chips a butter or in hot it. pie for some reason. Traditionally, the dish is made with marrowfat peas that are covered with water and baking soda, left to soak for 12 hours, and then baking boiled soda. in water until mushy. Sometimes a dash of mint sauce is added for some extra flavor. Mm. Due to how much some people love them, mushy peas have been referred to as Yorkshire caviar. Number six. Deep <laughs> I don't think I've ever had mushy peas, but I think I would like that. I love beans, I love peas, and they're mushed up. I, I would probably like that. I think I would love mushy peas. That's all right with me. Number six. Deep fried everything. Oh, yeah. When it comes to the art of deep frying food, the Brits are pioneers in this field. And it's not just savory meals we dip into hot fat like fish or sausages. Eggs. We often like submerging sweet treats like Mars bars and cream sure. eggs. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't like it, but there's a lot of people that do like it. While some of you may be salivating at the thought, others will be wondering, what's wrong with Brits? There are even battered nope. peas, battered pizza called pizza crunch, and spam fritters, which became a delicacy during the 1940s. Ooh. But if that's not enough deep fried goodness for you, some takeaways offer scraps, which are the leftover crispy pieces of batter that can be sprinkled <gasps> onto your food or simply eaten as is. Now that's Probably a great idea. Y'all, I'm from the southeast of the United States. We do the same. We deep fry everything. Everything's better deep fried. We probably get it from the British and the Scottish, but Scottish are British, right? In America, usually if you go to a state fair or like a carnival or a rodeo or something, you'll find a lot of deep fried everything. Deep fried Oreos, deep fried Snicker bars. Sometimes people can't get enough deep fried that they'll deep fry something and then they'll let it cool and then they'll deep fry it again just to get more deep fried. It's called double fried. Triple fried is a thing too. I love deep fried stuff. I think it's brilliant to deep fry anything. Sure, it's not healthy, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about mouth pleasure. Mmm. Mmm. That's good stuff. Number five, chips. Chips. Depending oh, on yes. where you grew up in the UK, you'll have very strong opinions on what should be on a chippy tea. One of the best foods ever. else is frankly wrong, upsetting, and should be banned. I don't like it, okay? It's too greasy! It's much, much too greasy! According to YouGov in 2020, which looked at Britain's favourite chip toppings across the region, North England loves slathering those fried spuds with gravy. Yorkshire sloshes mushy peas on top. Southerns mm. like the simple mayonnaise. Oxfordshire likes tangy tomato ketchup. Scotland sticks with tradition by using salt and vinegar. Cornwall makes oh. their chips cheesy. And Wales favours curry sauce. You can Ooh. honestly tell where someone's from by simply asking what their oh, favorite topping is. Mm. Try asking strangers and let us know the results in the comments. In America, it's traditional to just dip those chips in ketchup, but I'm down with the mayonnaise. We could get, we could do mayonnaise. I'm down with that. Never had it with brown sauce. I've had poutine before, so there's all kinds of stuff on there. I love like a lightly fried egg on top of some French fry. Excuse me, chips. Um, what else did he say? Gravy? Cheese? Oh, vinegar? That's, that's some creative chip topping. I bet all of that would be good. I mean, that's like chips. I'm struggling not to call them french fries. Chips are one of the greatest inventions ever. How could it be bad? It's a fried potato. That's the best. 
Number four, Christmas pudding. Mm. During late December every year, after consuming an entire spruced up roast dinner as per the custom, the fruity round the? brown Christmas pudding is pulled out. Everyone is giddy and clapping when brandy is poured over the pudding before it is set ablaze. But then, when it comes to eating it, people are divided. Some love the tradition and will likely comment it wouldn't be Christmas without it. Others prefer nicer, better desserts. The Christmas pudding has been part of the UK's festivities since the medieval period, before mm. it really took off during the Victorian era. Some families even include silver coins in the pudding. Whoever gets the surprise will be blessed with wealth over the following That's year. That's fun. I've never had Christmas pudding. It looks like fruitcake. Is there fruit in there? I feel like I looked that up for a Christmas video I reacted to, and it said that there was suet in it, which is like animal fat. I'm okay with that. But then I saw in the comments that suet is replaced with other stuff in more modern times. I like that. I don't know if I love or hate Christmas pudding. It looks good. It has brandy in it. I would like to try it. Some families even include silver coins in the pudding. Whoever gets the surprise will be blessed with wealth over the following year. And a dentist bill. Number three, haggis. Hey, this haggis stuff is great! If you're Scottish or have a touch of Scottish mm -hmm. heritage in your genes, then at some I point do. you've probably been pressured to try haggis. I'm not. After all, it's the national dish of Scotland. Mm. When you try it, it's not too bad. Sure, an acquired taste, but many people really enjoy this traditional meal. That's but then you hear what's in it, and it might put you oh, off. Oh, that's too for big. Life. Originally, a haggis was made with minced sheep organs mixed with oatmeal, onions, and other spices, with the whole thing being encased in the sheep's stomach, at least in the mm. past. Nowadays, an artificial casing is used. The haggis is often served with neeps and tatties, or Sweden potatoes for you non Scots. I've never had haggis, and I would try it, but I, I, I don't normally like organs. I have had pork stomach before in a boat noodle dish, and I didn't like the texture. The flavor it was kind of bland, but the texture was weird because it has the little, the inside of the stomach little things. They're like little skin hairs. It's, it's a little not great. I feel like the inside of the haggis might not be too bad if it's, you know, it is minced up. It's not like it, there's just a heart in there or a lung or something. It's minced up and it's combined with other things. I, I might like it. I don't know. I need to try it. I need to try it. I have to try it. I'm not going to pass judgment until I've tried it. I don't know if I like haggis. We'll see. I know I don't like stomach, though. Or organs. Number two, black pudding. Black. There's black puddings in it. Black puddings are not good to us. Another favorite addition to the English breakfast is some fried slices of black pudding alongside the baked beans and mushrooms. Is that especially organ? Especially in the Midlands, Scotland, and North England. It's blood, it's isn't it? It's even been described as a superfood uh, thanks to being high in protein uh, and loaded with essential minerals like iron and zinc. But the reason for this nutrition is also what makes people despise the idea of black pudding. Herbs and something grainy, like oat or barley, are mixed with pork or beef blood, giving it the iconic dark color, and mm. the reason some are grossed out by the food. This sausage has been around in the UK for centuries. Even with its name, black pudding is definitely not considered a dessert. Interesting. I've never had black pudding. I have definitely eaten blood before because I've eaten red meat, but as long as it doesn't taste like whenever you have blood in your mouth and it tastes like pennies or something, I might be okay with it. Does it have a metallic taste? I need to try blood pudding. It's another thing I gotta try. Number one, Marmite. Mm. Oh, stuck right at the back. Oh. Who knows how long that's been in here. The team's only option is to remove <laughs> the stricken jar. <laughs> we had to finish with the food that made love it or hate it their slogan. Uh. Inspired by someone brewing some beer and looking at the sludgy remains and thinking, that'd be great on toast, along came the birth of mm. Marmite. This yeast extract has divided not only the country, but also families and lifelong friends. Some enjoy the sticky dark substance with its bitter tangy flavor. Others think it's an abomination. But regardless, Marmite is surprisingly high in vitamin B. This is great for vegans hmm. when more sources for this essential nutrient are from animals. 
Those that enjoy Marmite really enjoy it. Nigella Lawson even used it in a recipe for spaghetti, which will probably upset Italians once more in this video. Soz. Yeah, I've never had Marmite. I need to get some. I need to try it. They said it, it's yeasty. I do like the smell of barley. Is that what it tastes like? It's made from brewer's yeast. Strong, savory, salty, and earthy. A dark soy sauce. I like soy sauce. Oh, it's really salty, I guess. Salty and earthy. Hmm. I feel like that's another thing that maybe on its own, it's kind of disgusting. But if you put it on something or use it as an ingredient, it might be really good. In my mind, I'm picturing like breadish, barleyish, beerish kind of flavor with a lot of salt. That sounds good to me. British food gets a bad rap, but there's some, there's some winners in here. I mean, the chips, the deep frying everything. Yes, yes, yes. I think I'm down with all of them other than the jelly deals. I, I, I would try it, though. I would try it. <laughs> it's so gross to think about. <laughs> oh, can you, do you buy it in a can? Oh, yes, some pretty bizarre foods to my American palate. I would like to try them all, though, other than the jelly deal. But I will. I'll try the jelly deal. Try it. I'm open to it. It might be good. What if I love it? What if I eat jelly deal and it's the greatest thing? Thank y'all for recommending this video. Thank y'all for watching it with me, and I'll see you next time. Later.